Hi, my name is Brittany and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Zoo. Today's project is titled Owl Pellet Investigation. And I'm gonna take you through all of the necessary steps in order for you to do your very own owl pellet dissection. Starting with the materials that you'll need. For an owl pellet dissection, you're gonna need one of these. Now, this might look like a mini baked potato, but it's definitely not. Inside is a sterilized owl pellet. You can find these online through many educational organizations, which is where we got this one today. You'll also need some tools. Now your tools can vary. Um, so what I'm gonna use today are some tweezers, and there are two types of probes. One's a little bit sharper, and one is a blunt tip end. I also have a ruler. Sometimes I like to measure the different bones that I find. You'll want a dissection tray to keep everything organized and in one spot. And lastly, this is an optional item, but I like to use like a painting palette. Um, it helps me to organize the smaller bones so I can help identify them later. Go ahead and gather all of your items up. Come on back and let's get started. Have you ever wondered, how does an owl form a palette? Owls are birds of prey. They eat other animals to survive. The fleshy parts of the animal are really easy for them to digest. However, the hair, fur, bones, and feathers, not so much. Those body parts will sit in the gizzard, forming an oval-shaped mass that we call a pellet. Later, these pellets are regurgitated through the mouth of the owl. These owl pellets can be a great source of information for biologists so they can learn more about an owl's diet. Now let's start dissecting. While not necessary, we do recommend that you wear gloves. Now as we look, I can already see some different bones. Pieces of grass, and even hair. As you dissect, there may be a piece where you can easily tear it apart and break it into two. Just be careful as a lot of these bones are very small. So as you move the owl pellet and break it into pieces, you'll start finding bones. Like this looks like a skull, and this is a tiny rib bone. Now again, if you want, you can put the bones that you find in piles or in little compartments and come back to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start exploring this some more. Using the rodent bone identification chart, I was able to help sort through some of what I found from the owl pellet and learn more about each one. I found many skulls, actually four to be exact. The mandibles, the lower jaw, I found a couple scapulas, front limb, it's really difficult to find some of these smaller bones in the owl pellet. Pelvis, hind limb, many ribs, those are very delicate bones and even a vertebra. Now scientists like to look at owl pellets to learn more about what they eat. While it seems that this owl had a mighty feast of many different rodents, owls also eat other animals too. And we can learn a lot about their diet through dissection. 